And this is with the end of the game. Jonah Heim, bases loaded, two outs. It's the scenario that every kid dreams of, right? Be able to walk off a game, and Jonah Heim gets to do it on the same day that the team raised the banner for their World Series championship. And he joins us now here on SportsCenter. Uh, take me into that at bat, because we saw you spike the helmet at first base. And I'm wondering, Jonah, were you feeling some responsibility about that pass ball that shouldn't have been a pass ball, and you felt kind of vindicated by that home, about that uh, game-winning hit? Yeah, it was uh, just a lot of emotions coming to coming to the surface there. Um, obviously, I take full responsibility what I've done anyway. Anyway, my emotions get the best of me. And, um, should have finished the play. Uh, that's all on me. And uh, I'm glad Travis came up and, and tied the game there with a the big swing. And I'm going to buy him a dinner or something. And, uh, <laughs> um, just getting to getting to help the team out and, and kind of make up make up for earlier. And felt pretty good. You know, in basketball, there's a saying: the ball don't lie. When a call goes against you and another team has the next shot and they miss that kind of says, yeah, they got the call wrong. Did you sort of feel that way when Jankowski hit the home run, Jonah? Because he only hit one home run last year, 11 in his career and 500-something games, and he comes up, of all people, to tie the game with that solo shot. Yeah, I mean, that just shows, shows the depth of this lineup. And anybody can beat you at any time. And uh, he came up big there, like I said, probably a steak dinner or something uh, next road trip. And um, it's, it's just baseball. Um, stuff doesn't go your way sometimes. You got to got to roll with the punches there and then try to compete what a way to finish your home opener the same day that you raise your championship banner and I wonder Jonah that is clearly something that every player dreams of and it was the goal for every team last year but only one team was able to do it and that was you guys but to be here in this moment and see that flag go up clearly several months after you won that World Series what was that experience like reliving those memories yeah it was super special it's, it's something you always dream of as a kid and uh, I think it really set in that we we did the op uh, ultimate goal and won the World Series last year when we saw that banner fall and everybody screaming and having a good time here. So uh, glad we could send the fans home happy. They've been outstanding for the last couple of years and stayed with us, and we're, we're finally giving them some good baseball. Hey, you, you drive in the game-winning run on opening night. I'm pretty sure you're going to get the aux cord when you get to the clubhouse. You're in charge <laughs> of the music. What's the celebratory song that Jonah Himes is going to play tonight? I don't know. They've probably got something bumping in there right now. And, uh, I, I never get handed the Ox. I'm just a country guy, so I don't think they want that point in there right now. Hey, if there's one night you deserve it, Jonah, go get that Ox cord, man. Congratulations, and uh, best of luck the rest of the season. Hope to see you again. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right, Jonah Heim from the Texas Rangers joining us here as they take down the Cubs on opening night. Uh, let's go to the West Coast. Shohei Otani making his much-anticipated debut with the Dodgers. It was anticipated anyway, but then with the controversy of everything going on around him, this was the introduction. Number 17. That was the voice of award-winning actor Brian Cranston on the introduction. The fans, oh, controversy or not, they're happy to see him in a Dodger lineup. And there he is, his first at bat, rips one down the right field line, a double. But he's thinking three. Problem was Mookie Betts had to stop at third, and Otani gets hung up. But nonetheless, his first at bat, he gets a hit for the Dodgers. So next up, Freddie Freeman. Again, Betts is still on third with just one out. Infield drawn in, didn't matter. Freeman gets the RBI, gives the Dodgers their first lead of the game, 1-0. They would add another one on a sack fly later, and then bottom of the third, Betts at the plate. And he smoked that pitch like a swisher. That is deep to left. His second of the season, of course, he had one in South Korea last week. Betts Otani, loving it. Three nothing Dodgers and Freddie Freeman. Yo, can I get a taste? That's a two run shot. Betts and Freeman both go two for three with the home run. Dodgers with a five nothing lead. Well, speaking of newly acquired players, how about Tyler Glass now? Came over in the offseason as well. Top of the six gets Paul Goldschmidt to swing on that curveball. Then the very next batter, Nolan Gorman. Dodgers win it 7-1. Otani, though, just happy to be a Dodger. Well, 
まあ、僕だけホームランは打てなかったですけど、<笑>まあ比較的いい打席だったんじゃないかなと思うので、あのいいゲームだったなと思います。So you take a look at the big three through three. Of course, they played two games against the Padres there in South Korea. And how good have they been swinging the bat?、Uh, that good. MVP candidates for sure, all hitting above 300 through the first three games. And look at Mookie Betts 6 36 with two bombs already. Lead was not safe in this one. Yankees, Astros, Aaron Judge, Juan Soto, and the Yankees in Houston visiting Jose Altuve on opening day. Take you to the bottom of the second. Strohs lead three zip. Jake Myers launches a Nestor Cortez fastball solo home run. Watch the cool bat flip. Second Houston player batting ninth to homer in a season opener in franchise history. Take you into the fifth. Top of Soto up with the bases loaded. No out. Soto lines this one to right field. Base hit. Jose Trevino will score. The Yankees bench will love it. First hit and RBI is a Yankee for Soto. Yankees now trail four to one. Next batter, Judge. Looking to do some more damage. Checks a swing, does not hold up. Astros get a big out after. Giancarlo Stanton, strikeout, bases loaded. Two outs for Anthony Rizzo. He is hit by a pitch, his 214th career hit by pitch, the most among active MLB players. Rizzo would stay in the game. The Yankees trail 4-2. After a bases loaded walk to make it 4 3, Alex Verdugo up with bases loaded, two outs, grounds out to first to end the inning. Yankees still trail 4 3. Top of the sixth game score, Oswaldo Cabrera will launch one to right field. That's a solo blast. The Yankees tie the game at four. They were down 4 0 in this game. Bottom of the ninth inning, watch this. Strohs trail 5 4. Kyle Tucker up with the game tying run in scoring position, one out, grounds one. Through the right side for a base hit. Mauricio Dubon is sent home. Soto, the cannon arm. Are you kidding me? With an excellent throw, Trevino does not miss the tag on Dubon. The call on the field is upheld. Take a look at this. He will catch him. Oh my, what a play. Take a listen to Soto's thoughts on the play. It was incredible. When I got the ball, I know where he was. And I just, I just tried to make sure I throw the perfect throw to the play and let Trevi do what he can do, you know? And that's what I thought. That's what my mind said. I don't try to be too quick. He just tried to put a ball where I needed to put it. Next batter, Alex Bregman, up as the last chance for the Astros.、And、Bregman grounds out into a fielder's choice to end the game. The Yankees win 5-4, the largest comeback win on opening day since 1950. Here's the Yankees on Soto's cannon arm. That was a Yankee classic right there. That was、uh, <laughs> Juan's debut. That was pretty, pretty special out of him. You know, come up, get his first hit, first at bat, he takes a walk. You know, then come up there and, you know, biggest moment of the game and just be cool, calm, and collected and deliver a strike home. That just speaks volume of the type of player he is and the type of presence he has. Yeah, you always expect him to do good,、uh, great things.、Um, I thought he had really good at bats throughout the whole, throughout the whole day.、Um, got an RBI for us early,、um, and then obviously topped it off with that throw.、Um, I think you couldn't write it yourself, so that, that's, that, was, that was amazing to watch. A Yankee classic indeed. The Yankees come back from down four zip, the second largest opening day comeback in team history. The largest was in 1950. They were trailing 9 0 against the Red Sox. They went on to win 15 12. New York was 1 9 in season openers, down four or more entering Thursday. No one cares about the weather in Los Angeles. <laughs> Except maybe the Angels when they get back from this road trip. First of all, they got to handle the Orioles on opening day before the game. Some of the new ownership group brought out some drinks to the fans. Hey, you want to endear yourself? Who doesn't like free drinks? Corbin Burns making his debut with the Orioles. Mike Trout, first inning, says, Y'all better back up, suckers. I'm feeling good today and maybe even this year. Trout, fourth home run on opening day. That's the most in Angels history. And his squad's off to a 1 0 advantage. He's always played well there in Camden Yards. Bottom of the second we go. Orioles now have the lead at 2 1. Adley Rushman up the middle, drives in two. And Baltimore pushes that lead to 4 1. Go to the bottom of the fourth. It's 5 1 now. Anthony Santander gone. That's a two run shot, and it's 7 1 0. 
And after that early home run from Trout, Burns start breaking up dudes like some scratch offs. Breaking ball, strikeout. Breaking ball, strikeout. Breaking ball, strikeout. There is a pattern here. He had 11 Ks. Nine of them came on breaking balls. Orioles win it 11 to 3. O's largest opening day win since 1982. And Burns, he showed up and showed out in his O's debut, punching out the most batters on opening day by an Orioles since 1998. Only Dave McAnally in 1970 racked up more Ks in the first game of the season. When it comes to major professional sports, more times than not, women have been told what they can't do as opposed to giving them an opportunity to prove what they are actually capable of doing. And the broadcasting field is no exception. Sideline reporter? Okay, fine. Analyst or lead announcer? No way. What do they know about the game? Well, thankfully, countless women are shattering those antiquated glass ceilings, including Jenny Kavnar, who today became the first woman to serve as lead play-by-play -play announcer for a Major League Baseball team, calling every pitch tonight for the Oakland A's as they hosted the Guardians. Here is how she opened this historical broadcast. Baseball set to begin. Jenny Kavnar, Dallas Braden. Let's have some fun tonight. Let's have some fun this season as we embark on a new journey. I think that's what makes opening day so special. Dallas, clean slate, ready to rock and roll. Awesome moment there for Jenny. By the way, she named her son after Vince Scully. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. True story. Top of the fourth, bases loaded. Brian Rocchio lines one to left. Two runners score. The A's down. 6 nothing in this game. Of course, a lot of controversy around them. They're going to move to Vegas, going to stay in California. How are the fans reacting to it? Well, they're not liking this because it is 6 nothing. bottom of the six there in the Bay. Well, the game you saw right here on ESPN, the Rangers opening night as they bring out the World Series trophy and raise that championship banner. Bruce Bochy, he's won a... A couple of those, the first time he's got it there in the American League. All right, the ace for the Cubs, Justin Steele. Watch this. So it's a bunt. He sprints to make the play and then tumbles. Uh-oh, he's grabbing something. He would be down there for a while. Right there. Team says it's going to be an MRI tomorrow, but it's very likely he's going to head to the IL. Bottom of the six, Rangers down 2-1. Adolis Garcia. He hits it deep, so deep he put that pitch to sleep. Fired up, yeah, bat flip, drop it like a mic. Whatever you want to do, Adolis, it's your world. We're tied at two. Ninth inning, some controversy. Two on, two outs. Josh LeClerc's pitch gets by Jonah. Jose LeClerc but gets by Jonah Heim. Heim thought the ball was fouled, doesn't chase after it. Michael Bush comes home with the go-ahead run, and three plays clearly showed it was a foul tip, but the home plate umpire didn't hear it, didn't see it. Jonah's like, are we serious? Because he knew. He knew what was happening. So, bottom of the ninth. Rangers need to do something, and that's what they do. Travis Jankowski pinch hitting. He had one home run last year. He had 11 in his career, more than 500 games. That one ties the game. We go to extras. Bottom of the tenth. We're tied at three, bases loaded, two outs. Guess who's at the plate? Heim. Oh, how does it feel to be relieved of your responsibilities? Heim, there you go. Spike that helmet, big dog. Rangers get the win in extras on opening night, 4-3 over the Cubs.